All right. Well, um, <laughs> welcome in to everybody. Uh, my name is Mike Hess. I am Kelly Becker and, and John Linnell is our favorite. Hey, John. So this is Fight to Flight with Kelly and Mike looking at how we're handling our own messes and everything else that's going on uh, in this rather unusual time of ours right now. So, um, John, I have... <laughs> so yeah that's that little delay there um just catching up on john's mic check message there hopefully everything's coming in okay um john did hit on a key thing there kinda, i kind of i have forgotten about in with um navigator live i do have a little bit of that uh old timey chicago piano music in the um in the intro there um and i haven't done that for fight to flight i keep I guess I hadn't thought about that before because I we always have the sound muted on this end so that it doesn't reverb and all that stuff. Um, so it didn't occur to me. So I'm gonna have to I'm gonna have to fix that I guess. So, uh, but yes, this is fight flight with Kelly and Mike. Um, all that preamble aside, you're rubbing off on your preamble with me. <laughs> so share share with the group because they like our real stories. They do and. Um, Everybody, please tell me that you would still be married to me and love me. <laughs> well, I would still be married to you. Okay. So maybe if that counts for anything. Share that. Which apparently doesn't count Wasn't for much. Wasn't it Mary's birthday yesterday? Oh, it was, yes. Can you scooch just a touch? So no. That we can, we, so, well, I want to be centered on that. We're not we centered go. at all, but it's fine. Um, Jim and Mary are our heroes, and I only wish for a love like theirs. Yes. So... Um, I hesitate. I, I don't. I, I don't know. Maybe you've seen this in your relationships, but there may be one partner who, um, when it's time to go, it's we oh. get our stuff ready to go, and it's time to go. And then there's another partner who suddenly develops a five-point checklist of things that need to be done in the thirty seconds between saying, "Well, it's time to go," and actually leaving the house. So. Oh well, I believe checklists save lives and it's what they use with the air force and pilots they do and um how many times do you go somewhere without me where you've forgotten something um the times where i don't get there on time i'll take that but <laughs> i also remember that one mike hess and one emma hess left for the farmer's market while wife Kelly was at home working and the doors were shut twice and then one Mike came back for a bag to take to said farmer's market. So a checklist is important. True. However, doing stuff in a timely fashion also important. Okay. Why were you working on Saturday morning? I talk too much with my patients. I Let's reframe that. I don't like that because I don't, I honestly, I don't think you talk too much. I don't. You. This healthcare the system, environment does yeah, not allow me. There we go. <laughs> Just like, so my handsome man here. There we go. Rolls up. Now we're talking. To pick me up from my office today in my chariot. Still with the broke ass tire from Friday last week family show sorry so the broke the the flat tire replaced by oh my god you had to work so hard to replace that and I love you for it yeah because, they really cranked those on with that air because wrench. your clinic required that a patient reschedule to when we were going to get our four new tires replaced for some pretty coin right before a two-week vacation Talk about tire fire. Yeah. Anyway, it's fine. Um, yeah. Um, so, yes, the healthcare system, and, and I think that's what we're seeing a lot. I actually, I was in a discussion today. Well, I, well yeah, I was in a discussion. There was a, um, in, uh, this was in one of Z-Dog MD's groups. You know, if you're not familiar with Z-Dog MD, he is a um, uh, uh, internal medicine doc turned advocate turned doc again. He tried to redo healthcare. He, he's, he's 
kind of a role model in that I would hope to, I aspire to be that kind of advocate and influencer someday. Um, he's got a couple, there are a couple of groups out there that are talking about that. And there was a nurse who um, was talking about going back to school to get their master's in public health. And so was curious what kind of the, the entry level jobs were like and things like that. And people were you know, because she's gotten kind of burned out on this whole pandemic thing. And so the the advice was uh, the the immediate advice, the reflex advice from people was, well, if you're burned out on COVID now, just wait until you get into public health. <laughs> um, but then she her point was she's not really burned out on COVID. She's burned out on the churn of health care. And I think that is something that a lot churn. of us. That's a great word. Thank you. I have my moments. I love you. I'd marry you for a fourth time. I've married him three times. It's fine. Um, so there's a lot. There's a. I see what's happening back there. there. Yeah. Um, a lot of healthcare providers are dealing with that right now. With not again, the pandemic is one of those things that has kind of illustrated the weaknesses in healthcare. This is not a new thing. Arguably, it's been far more intense than it has been because. You know, workloads are through the roof. You know, workloads were already stressed. Workloads are now through the roof. Working conditions are poorer. Um, all of these things are, are, are going on right now. And it's really difficult sometimes to kind of power through some of that stuff. However, an essential part of self-care is trying to, to, to take those experiences, but then also like uh, at one point, the, the, the theme, I can't remember if it was in the main video or in the... the um, the share, the watch party, which reminds me, I gotta get that other window up there because, ah, there's Elena. <gasps> so we've got Elena and John <gasps> checking in. Um, so is that Dolly Parton or Whitney Houston? Uh, generational. I mean, Elena, we will always love you too. Um, so part a part of recentering or part of, of, of self care is trying to be recentered. And so the last couple of weeks we have really uh, been we've kind of laid our souls bare a little bit and huh. it's important because it's you know you, you, as they say in a lot of different places you can't really solve the problem until you identify the problem you know uh, you, you can't I, I know there's a probably a pithier <clears throat> way to say that but um, recognizing the issue is the first step in solving it and so it's good that we are able to recognize our tire fires gi joe it, that's half the battle but it's not and, all about and it's good as clinicians, I think, and as uh, wannabe influencers, at least, to show that even the people who are supposed to know what we're talking about, Kelly, you know, the nurse practitioner, myself, Lord the, the public mercy. health uh, aficionado, we're supposed to know what we're doing. We're supposed to have the coping skills, but we are far from perfect. <laughs> Theory and, and practice. And that's kind of the essence of fight to flight. We're yeah. fighting against our own demons. We're fighting against our own barriers and all that stuff so that we can take flight. But this week we wanted to actually take some steps to take flight. Um, we're going to take a little bit of time off from the live shows because we're going on vacation mm -hmm. for a couple of weeks. So one of our favorite places on earth and talk about social distancing. <laughs> um, this, uh, the island is kind of built on <laughs> essentially social distancing. Uh, being social from a distance, however we want to put that. A uh, small place called They Beaver can throw a hell of a party, though. They can. They can. Um, and that's going to be a little bit different this year. But they're also one of the places in Michigan that is really taking this very seriously. And Respect. Hats off, northern Michigan, actually. Yes. Mm -hmm. um, wearing the masks, one-way aisles in the stores, you know, limiting uh, stuff. And also the fact that this is um, a big island with not many people on there. That doesn't hurt. <laughs> right. So we're going to be heading up there. My mom always said you could really hide a body. And people probably have. Uh, since you, <laughs> and now I'm a little bit more concerned about you watching nope. all those uh, your Deadly daughter, Housewives shows. Your daughter's watching that. I am down That's here true. with and my beloved that I've married three times. However, now I'm even more concerned because she was really adamant about getting you to watch with her. It's so really it's like, great. Uh, it's cheesy. It's so cheesy, but it's great. I miss the British accent, so. I know. Always. Always. 
So um, in any event, we're going to be going up there for a couple of weeks, one week with the family, one week with just us to again kind of recenter. We've discussed maybe doing some recorded videos and things like that. Um, the internet is not great up there, which is one of the appealing things to it. So Sometimes it is. Sometimes, Sometimes it is. Not. I mean, it's not like, you know, a rural campsite in a tent on Animal Crossing or anything like that. But um, <laughs> That's all I have. <laughs> but... Um, you know, um, um, so we're looking at doing some things like that, but this is our last live show for at least a couple of weeks, and we wanted to kind of um, to go into vacation, go out on a little bit of a higher note. So um, we we wanted we we threw this out to the universe last week. We wanted to do a concerted effort to um, be a little bit more positive, and that's why I'm, I'm fiddling with my phone here because I wanted to go back. Um, as, as John probably knows. Um, I follow a lot of uh, respiratory folks on Twitter, and what I have found is some of the folks over in the UK, they have got their stuff together when it I, comes to things like I'm pulmonary rehab and all that am. stuff. Well, yeah, yeah but it, even in general. Mm -hmm. And uh, Dr. Elaine Bevan-Smith, who has been doing a lot with pulmonary rehab, she's been doing, um, she actually announced today she's going to downshift a little bit to a weekly Tai Chi thing, but she's been doing a daily Tai Chi pulmonary rehab thing over Zoom. Did you, her. did you know this? I, I did. I keep I, I haven't been able to track down the time, but that's where some of the, the I was hoping to get, uh, you know, like what the sequence is and all that stuff. just hasn't worked out. So I'm going to be continuing to look into it. But yeah. right after we made that very conscious decision to try to spe uh, uh, find some more positive notes, she tweeted, um, this speaks volumes. One of our online group members hasn't been well. So I got her a card from the group, haven't posted it yet, showed it to her on the online group chat, and she was impre incredibly moved for it. Um, just shows how important hashtag random acts of kindness are for people who are shielding, which is what they're calling their shelter in place over oh, in the UK. Shielding. I like that. Um, and, you know, that was kind of a, 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 a message to me. It was like what we have focused on how disruptive and and rightfully so appropriately so but we focused on how disruptive and stressful and everything else that this pandemic has been um and changing you know i'm not wearing my traditional hawaiian shirt today because i just got home from work i've been back to work kelly's in the scrubs too we're, we're i didn't hug people like i do so i i i didn't feel the need to disrobe I didn't touch any single soul, which is strange. That was very strange. We were talking about this yesterday. That was a strange thing for me because I hadn't even realized it. But yesterday I was talking with one of our residents and he was offering some uh, empathy for a, a difficult case that we have. And he put his hand on my shoulder and my immediate response was to kind of recoil a little bit. And it like was you like, did with my sweet, sweet patient friend that you care about, but you want to make sure not to expose her. Well, exactly. Because that, you've that's, been in your clinic. Yeah. And, and, yeah. I, and again, I'm not saying this to be a downer, but again, no. it's one of those things that's really eye-opening. It, it is, I mean, It's like knowing when your hands are dirty or clean, when yeah. you know sterile environment. You we know, like, oh. Fundamentally, we're fundamentally changing how we're interacting with people to a degree that I didn't even realize. I mean, again, it's one of those things where you kind of intellectually know it, but until you go through it, oh you God. don't really, you, you don't know it. Um, yeah, I, I, oh, I threw the 60s slang out there last week. You don't grok it. <laughs> Stranger in a, which is weird you. because I just read another you whole in, huge article about, about Robert Heinlein and Stranger in a Strange Land and, and uh, um, Starship Troopers and just fascinating stuff but neither so again that's another one of my bright spots is it has allowed me to kind of dive into a little bit of the more things that make me passionate content creation yeah um i was really proud of a couple of videos i made at the beginning of this pandemic celebrating some of my respiratory colleagues um i got to learn how to use premiere and after effects and i got to kind of I, dis I really kind of discovered that love of learning again. And I, then, you know, because so the, the downside is I probably didn't take enough advantage of that, but I can still celebrate yeah. that I did that and I can do that again. And, I, you know, I, I can learn that again and I can find those bits of celebration. So while we're chatting, those of you who are hopefully still watching, I, I, let's see, we, we, are you still live over there? Or did you? I shut it, it down. I was okay. Hopefully, we got still a couple of people watching. Please share with us. I, I threw out a couple of things on Twitter and on LinkedIn and stuff. Share your bits of brightness with us. Um, but we're happy to to 
do that now. I know I got one other one, but I want to let you yeah, celebrate a little bit some. while I'm looking that up. And I'll tell you, uh, I've been really hard on myself and all of you, uh, and I see many people I know and love that, that present. Thank you. Also, thank you to my dear friends who showed me some support. You know who you are this week. Um, tears to my eyes and um, warmth and love to my heart. Thank you for that. Um, I... It's hard to be back in the clinic because it's hard for me to think about exposing patients and not being able to talk with my whole face. Um, another patient said, I'm learning to smile, where you smile with your eyes. Smize. Smize. Smile with eyes. Yes, smile with eyes. And I, I try to do that with my, because you know when you're in trouble and you know when I'm happy with my eyes, right? <laughs> yes. Yeah. Um, but I had some wonderful experiences last week in this. Um, and thank you, Sean. Um, ah, but I am. <laughs> Sean. Anyway. It's Taco Tuesday. Uh, we'll, we'll manage our portions. But I had, I had four new patients, one virtual, three live today. All very engaging, all very exciting. And then I heard from the NPPA president of our chapter, or our national OMA, the obesity, the obesity. obesity Medicine Association. And, you know, positive things anyway. It made me, like, cry. Mike was driving me home. We need four new tires before we go on vacation. You know how life is. Anyway, I've been beating myself up a lot about not having it all together after the pandemic and all of that. But... Seeing patients again, seeing people succeed, seeing people just um, succeed almost despite me has been <laughs> exciting. We walked last night. We did. It felt good. It yep. really did. It know. really did. It really did. And I, I, I really think when we're away and on vacation, we're going to, you know, kind of get back to center on our health. We're going to have good people with us. Um, good people to visit, good things to do and all of that. And there are a couple of things. So I ask people even today, um, tell me about some of the things that inspire you and make you or remind you that the world is good when it's, when it's tough. And the last patient I met right before the end of my day today shared two amazing things. And one was when people just open the door for you, perfect strangers. And um, she was going to or leaving an establishment and two young men uh, just ran to open the door for mm. her and she was really touched by that um, you know and a lot of us who have been otherwise socially strat um, stratified in other ways don't always get that kind of attention but it meant a lot to her she was just thrilled and I was thrilled just hearing it. And then I ask people often, what do you do to blow off steam and for stress management? Or what's good out there, you know, that, that helps you just feel positive? And we have pictures of our son at our local um, cat shelter. Mm, yes, Joey, the cat rescue. The, the cat cafe, cat cafe right? Cat cafe, yes. That's in our area. And she shared with me uh, Froggy's Pond in Penfield. And they're these amazing people, um, rescue cats, maybe with health conditions or other <laughs> social determinants, <laughs> and allow them to live out their lives, many of them with immune disorders, hmm. like a lot of, of, our, of our people who, who are shielding. There you go. And um, for this patient who, due to chronic illness, needs to shield herself, um, and doesn't yet have a place. She and her fa uh, fiance don't have a place yet where they can have their own pets. And she um, is missing a, a feline friend of the past. Um, sh this goes and um, she goes and this fills her cup back up. Mm. And she's and they know her. And um, so I wanted to know more about uh, about that. Um, that's the same patient had the the doors held for her nice. and. Um, that was just as I ran out to you in the car, you know. Um, just those are, are wonderful and beautiful things. And, and I especially love when um, people you don't expect, hmm. you know, she didn't expect these young men to go out of their way to help her. And it meant a lot to her. And we do see that, I believe, you know, oh, you know, or when we're walking, right? And um, we're walking yesterday and then it can be like uh, the Wild West. Who... <laughs> 
Is it going to be the man with a dog or is it going to be this old married couple? Who's going to go to the street? And I'm like, we need to go to the street. That dog needs the grass and safety, right? And he was like, thank you so very much. And that's, you know, how we care for each other. And and that was fun. It was fun to be out there. That's been another hidden gem for me, you know, getting the steps and walking through the neighborhood. And I, I, it's it's a nice neighborhood. It's weird because, you know, these are the same places I was walking four years ago, four mm-hmm. and a half years ago, pre-surgery and all that stuff. But it almost feels like I have a greater appreciation for it now. Yeah. You know, having been stuck inside, you know, being doing the shielding and all that stuff. And then just walking through the neighborhood, seeing those little libraries there's oh, a lot of those these yeah, days that's a good um, point the pop-up <laughs> pantry one of our religious organizations in town i don't know if it's a church or the one of the church union thing, i don't know exactly what it is but they have a site that roams through the neighborhood where it's basically just free food if you need it um a garden you know, pitch pick yeah, yeah there are um you know we've we've seen been able to see a lot of that stuff and um hopefully have some inspiration for when we were able to spruce up the, our, <laughs> our our curb appeal a little bit more um but uh, it's been really nice to see different architecture different color schemes we were walking down one of the streets that we rarely seem to walk down and that house that you mentioned i think you like their shutters or their oh is their door you really like their door. Yeah. And then I said, I really like that entire color scheme. And it was just. It makes you feel good. Yeah. It wasn't anything real. I like how they put that together. Yeah. It wasn't yeah. anything real unusual or anything. It's just one of the, it really struck me as now I have more of an appreciation for subtlety almost. I mean, just the things that are really o- easy to overlook in our day to day hustle and bustle right. in the churn. Mm-hmm. Um, when you take a moment to pause when you can and look at some of those things, it's like, wow, that's really not, how have I not noticed that before? I mean, I've lived in this neighborhood for seven years now. And how have I not noticed that house before? How have I not noticed that architecture or that, mm-hmm. that I noticed green more last night of or, a place that we go often. I thought, wow, look at that. I really, um, admiring and celebrating or, or when you see a, um, family and in great diversity in our, mm-hmm. our neighborhood and, and seeing um, the members out smiling and, and being who they are and wow I really love what they've done or look at that amazing space they look like a lot of fun to go hang out under their lights or you know they have that shatter barn or I love what they wow we should really think about you know this or that um, you know oh the young yep that young person's out mowing the lawn now and you know way to go you know you're you're a good person you know you're you're getting it right um or smelling the dinner and the laundry and there's something about the the day the day-to-day grind but when you're walking by and you know families are living there's a beauty in that it's almost like you know you're in a a symphony and it 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 really brings me a lot of joy in, in the area yeah, and it's funny you used the, the analogy before about filling your cup um, because hmm. you can't pour from an empty cup, so you can't care for others if you don't have anything left. And, you know, you have to drink some from your own cup, and then you're able to share, you know, it's like the oxygen masks on the plane. you got to put your own on and get your own oxygen before you're able to give it to anybody else. And walking through the neighborhood kind of feels like running through a sprinkler or really running through like a series of sprinklers because you're getting a little bit from here and a little bit from here and a little bit from here. And it it really is refreshing. It really is. It is. It really is. So, again, um, I'd love to hear, I'd love to share, uh, for you to share some of your other stories. You can um, send them to, you you can comment them on here. Um, you can find me on, on Twitter. You can send me a message there. You can send us an email at bestnest at copdnavigator.net if you don't want your name on the, on the thing. Um, we do have another friend of ours who commented um, that they didn't have anything specific to report, but they were able to support someone with a monetary gift in their real time of need. Um, didn't want to share it, wanted to maintain their privacy, all that kind of stuff, but... It makes me think of all those stories you hear sometimes about uh, paying it forward at the drive-thru or um, oh, the, single, the single mom who goes up to pay. And I mean, when we used to go be able to go to restaurants, yeah. um, 
the single mom who goes up to pay and it's like, oh, no, that other that gentleman did or, you know, that other family did or things like that. Yeah. Um, you know, it, it's really the the acts of kindness and the lights and the darkness can take so many forms. You know, sometimes it's an explicit gift. Sometimes it's celebrations from professional organizations. Sometimes it's friends offering incredibly kind words for things. Um, sometime, Thank you again. Sometimes yeah. it's uh, it's achievements. I, I was celebrating today. I mentioned it briefly in the car. I had um, this is my officially my third um, peer review journal article. Yeah, was, was, I've got precisely zero. I think. Well, I'm and not. I mean, I'm not. I'm, no, I'm excited for you. Um, uh, found, it was actually published uh, a couple of days ago, but I found out about it today from a um, from a from a contact through you know I ha I've had some professional dealings with, but not somebody I would necessarily call like a, a close friend or anything mm -hmm. like that. But um, happy to celebrate me, you know. They, she found the article and was like, sh shared it on LinkedIn. It was like, look at congratulations on another on another article. Um, so there there really are positive things going on right now and that's part of um centering and things like that i know um, let's see if i can pull that up again i'm I, seeing a lot of people really succeeding despite the storms yes it's been so inspiring i think i've been more inspired by my friends family and patients than ever and i'm so excited i'm so excited to see other lights shine um and i and i think that's a good place to be you know this world would just be better if we all celebrated that. Yes, you know, absolutely. Never, ever, ever put out someone else's light. I, you know, stoke that fire and let that shine brightly. I, that's, I think that's the sentiment I want going forward. You know, um, it's so exciting when others overcome and succeed and prevail and feel good and um can celebrate and be proud and i love sharing in that space it, that's been really and i've i've been able to celebrate a lot of um friends family and patients lately and that i i thank you all for your hard work and your willingness and your perseverance because it has been so good for my soul um you know? sean says she shows love by buying my friends food <laughs> <laughs> and you know again maybe that I, seems I, I do that in my office a lot. Maybe a lot. that seems like a small yeah. thing, but I was reading again recently um, the origins of the butterfly effect theory, you know, in chaos theory, where, you know, if you go back in time and flap a, you know, butterfly flaps its wings a different way, then weather patterns change and things like that. And it was taught, the, the specific article was talking about the, the pandemic. And, it, you know, it's very possible that a minor intervention while we don't think it's going to have a big effect, may end up having a big effect because it happens in weather systems. It happens in basically any complex system for good or for ill. I mean, there are, um, <laughs> John says, <laughs> Sean's friend. Uh, I don't You're know. You're both amazing. Yeah, I think. Sean, do you know how to make a uh, lutefisk? I know that's one of John's favorites. <laughs> I think we need to get some lye or something. It's a... <laughs> You're not gonna kill him. No, it's a thing, John. Okay. Uh, it, it's a it's a Norwegian like delicacy. It's like lye soaked whitefish or something like that. Okay. It, it's apparently a thing that you're supposed to be Norwegian to really appreciate. Respect. Yeah, uh, I, I'm kind of curious to try it myself. So it's all right <laughs> at some point. Um, but uh, what was I saying about uh, um, chaos theory and butterfly effect? And oh. The, the article is talking about how, <laughs> uh oh, uh, I buy food I don't cook. Now, <laughs> That's amazing. I, I guess, love you both. I guess I have my Lutefisk facts wrong. <laughs> um, <laughs> love the pressure cooker. Yes. Um, so this was talking about how, you know, we have seen in this pandemic, we have seen sometimes where you have these super spreader events where one person happens to be in the wrong place at the wrong time. Like there was somebody who infected like eight people in an elevator um, that wouldn't normally be <laughs> that. But that kills COVID. <laughs> 
<laughs> now they're friends. Yes. Now, well, and now <laughs> that one offhand comment yeah. has now brought two people together, and that's my butterfly effect. <laughs> Mike's a goober. Yeah, smooches. <laughs> so we see that in, in, in negative aspects, but we also see it in very positive things because <laughs> sometimes people are just down, and then Sean comes into their lives and buys them lunch, and it just happens to be their favorite food or the, you know their favorite restaurant, and now they're happier the rest of the day, and then maybe they hold the door open for somebody yeah. that they wouldn't have, or they return the shopping cart, or they do the thing that, you know, maybe if you're ground down and staring at the ground and all that, you wouldn't normally do. Um, and then that continue that goes viral. Mm -hmm. That continues to spread, and eventually it hits that point that was having that where somebody was having a really, really bad day. And I'm not necessarily talking about, you know, ending things or anything like that, but it brightens their day to the point where they get the confidence to apply for a job mm -hmm. or the confidence to leave a bad situation behind, whether it's a work or, or a domestic thing or something like that. Eventually that stuff builds. And, and we, we fo again, we focus on the negative build, but it also focuses on the upward spiral. And it also affects the upward spiral. You know, and as we're talking about this, especially for the goal for this week, what I've really been inspired by and excited about is that the positive um, downstream, upstream, uh, whatever effect of, um, you know, one person claims his or her right to be healthy uh, or make a decision to make a change. Mm -hmm. And then I can't tell you how, how often I see that someone does that and then um, the people in the immediate home notice that and make a change and they're feeling better. I can't tell you how many times I see um, three generations of a family or an entire unit uh, of the you know, of the hospital because they're all like, hey, I'm doing this. Um, not only would I love your support, but or they'll say, hey, what are you doing? And, um, you know, those can be tiny changes someone's making. And then um, their kids start walking with them and then their friends want to go too. Um, positive peer pressure. Yes. And it's it's freaking beautiful. Right. That's the and, and so I'm seeing a lot of that lately. I feel like there's a lot of uncertainty and how much should we open things and you know we shouldn't be foolish but I'm seeing some and I've seen all throughout this you know people you know the ones that would go by and honk for the child's birthday party I wanted yeah I was I was gonna mention that before about the walking through the neighborhood oh, because we we're on and one the of, painted rocks yes so much good so proud of people for being good to other people oh, and, and that uh, on a, even a larger scale than the rocks today um, that uh, uh, there are the leader of the um, uh, the neighborhood group, yeah, uh, who used to work at WMed with the with the crazy hair. She, she's awesome. Yeah, yeah, she's totally awesome. Mm -hmm. And th th and this is how this is where this is what it is. She had somehow this like giant bear statue that she says she's been trying to get rid of for like 10 years. And I mean, I, I haven't seen it uh, except in pictures, but it looks like it's, you know, like yay high, like short, well. <laughs> it's fine. <laughs> Try fine lightly too. There. I'm gorgeous. It's fine. Um, and she said, you know, no matter how I try to get rid of it, I've given it to friends and somehow it, it always manages to come back to my house. It's like the white elephant gift. <laughs> yeah. So she said it's in... It's on the, you know, this is the block of, uh, I can't remember which, which street in the neighborhood it was. Please come and get it and then do some fun stuff with it. And almost immediately people, somebody came and took it and it's been at like, I've seen like three different places where it's been already just today. Just this communal community activity. Somebody put a sweater on it. I mean, <laughs> they put masks on it. I mean, they, they, it, it's been this whole crazy thing. Aww. And it's just, you know, who knows how long it'll last? Who knows it'll, if it'll end up back at her house or, or what? But it's just, again, this nice positive thing because we're also having this 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 bizarre controversy about the masks and everybody's angry about that and, and working themselves up about it and everything else that's going on. I'm going to go back to watching um, murder mysteries, British murder mysteries. And so it's yeah. really nice at a time like this to have the good community part to it mm -hmm. um and 
I, I bring up the controversy with the masks because that was another thing. That was my weekly blog post on, on Navigator COPDnavigator.net this week was I, I don't really understand how we got here. And I'm not turning this into that debate right now, but I also kind of threw it out um, to some of my other colleagues and said, what is the psychology behind this? You know, how right. do we, I, I that, get. That would be an interesting thing to really dive into and study. Because I understand yeah. indifference. You know, I understand people not wearing a mask because they hadn't heard about it or they didn't really care all that much or anything like that. You know, I, we can. They we haven't can, been impacted. Yeah, we can debate that all day long. Yeah. But there are people who are viscerally. Furious. I, I saw the phrase incandescent rage, and, 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 and that's what it is. And I saw a lot of questions about why. You know, there you see these things on, on Twitter, you know, the videos of the meltdowns at Trader Joe's or Costco or all that stuff. And there's a degree, it seems to be a degree of, you know, this is how people are getting their 15 minutes of fame now. It's kind oh. of performative. But I, 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 that didn't really, I didn't buy that so much. I'm sure it's part of it, but it still doesn't really mm. explain how widespread it is. And so I kind of threw it out there, and a couple of people responded and said, I think it comes down to control. Mm -hmm. Not that necessarily that the government is trying to impose control, because, I mean, that's what the argument is, but that's not the root of the issue. The root of the issue is because there is so much uncertainty, mm -hmm. because there is so much fear, because there are so many things that are out of our control right now, we need to have something that is under our control, is in our control. And that's where people are driving. They have the control to put something on their face, you know, something over their face. They're, they're doing, um, and Bonnie Adler checking in a little bit there. Um, They have some degree of control over that. And then that got me to thinking, we always have control over our ability to, um, we always have control over how we treat other people. And so that is the core of where we're going. You know, you, you have the ability to control whether you are angry at other people or you're gonna do good things for other people. And that's kind of where a lot of these other things are coming from. You know, we can do the good things or we can do the not so good things. And you're taking a different um, maybe angle than, than when you brought this up that I immediately go to. It. When things are uncertain and I am scared, I want to know that I can exert control, period. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you know, and that's where a lot of, yeah. Um, if I demand that people cannot take my freedoms, then I don't have to feel uneasy. But also, I am more comfortable listening to the messages of those I trust because I'm too uncertain or scared to make my own conclusion. Yeah, and I think that that's part of it, too. I, I think, you know, if we talk about health communications and things like that, and again, you know, I'm not, well, we, we've allowed our health communications to get very politicized. We, we've, we, mm. not even politicized, it. it's almost tribal at this point. And again, <laughs> um, you know, that they're, they're, it's, it's like Lord of the Flies. Yeah, and it's difficult. And I think you're exactly right. You go back to, and, and this happens again, even outside the pandemic, when there's a lot of uncertainty, you go back to your trusted sources. Right. And, you know, I, it's really hard these days in particular, I think, to kind of separate out, you know, you may trust a source, but we really have to be analytical on, on any source. Who is going to benefit from this piece of news? You know, what, what is the evidence for this piece of, of news, you know, especially in healthcare, health communications? What's the source? You know, where, what, it's, it all comes back to, of course, Star Trek. Everything comes back to Star Trek. Con or science. Which is rooted in Star Trek. Or maybe it's the other way around. I'm not sure. It's all right. I'm with you. <laughs> I'd marry you again. It's fine. But, you know, there's, from, the, from that first season of Discovery, context is for kings mm. and queens. 
context is for royalty. Um, you, the individual thing or the 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 overarching declaration is rarely the right thing. I was actually talking with one of my patients about this today because we were talking about how a lot of this stuff changes over time. You know, the example that she used was, you know, well, one day is butter's good, then the next day margarine's bad, then the next day they're both bad. And, and we see this in COPD, you know, our steroids are good, steroids mm-hmm. are bad, steroids are, are kind of good. Because I think a, a big part of that issue is we, we don't translate clinical trial data and clinical articles like like that one I was talking about before that you know we don't translate articles like mine to the public realm very well because and I was talking about this on, on the podcast too it's almost a meme in academia where you get to the end of the, the your journal article and it says further research is indicated because we rarely have definitive answers because it's, it's always so indicated. difficult yeah. to you know you, People are so biologically, chemically, biochemically different. It's it's virtually impossible to extrapolate to the entire population. But we always have to start with some sample size, right? Mm-hmm. And so we see that you know if we have a small sample size, we say, oh yeah, this works. And then that's what gets out into the media. Again, not necessarily ill intentions or anything like that, but that's what gets out and it says, oh, this works. And then the next step of research is a little bit bigger, maybe a little bit more diverse, heterogeneous patient population. Heterogeneous, nice. And then we see, well, it works, but it doesn't seem to work as well. And then maybe we branch off into two studies, and they, the groups are a little bit similar. They're different from each other, but they're similar. And then now we start to see, oh, it works really well in this group, but doesn't work so well in this group. Mm-hmm. But that could be like five years down the road. And in the meantime, it's like, well, all this is good, and then now five years later, all this is bad. You know, so we have that breakdown in, in health communications. And so how do you trust that? And you know it's going to change tomorrow, and... And so then we start getting into cognitive biases and, um, you know, just, again, falling back into your trusted sources. And, you know, I personally, I've been disappointed in, in what I have previously thought to be trusted sources because, I, you know, they've been wishy-washy or they've been inconsistent. Or, uh, I mean, I don't think anybody on any part of the political spectrum would say that groups like CDC and WHO have really fumbled at least parts of this crisis you don't let's go back you don't think they would deny that they fumbled oh i I don't think anybody on either side of the the spectrum would argue with that right i I think i i think one of the very few things we can agree on whether we whichever answer we we feel is right (laughs) um it's been CDC flawed. has yeah CDC has been very flawed um, WHO has been very flawed you know a lot of these groups that were really kind of in, uh, infallible and maybe a, maybe that was my own bias talking you know I, I, as a clinician I had a lot of faith in these groups and now that faith has been shaken a, at least a little bit um, well, that's been upsetting for more than a pandemic but like hmm. yeah um, wow. But again, regardless of the the reason, it's do we can we fall back on those trusted sources now, um, yeah. or you know if 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 people aren't may, maybe privy to the kind of the the experience and the clinical data and that kind of stuff that you and I see, they they may really not know who to trust because you know we have we're mm-hmm. experienced at this point in our careers at trying to separate out some of the wheat from the chaff. What I think about, I used to. <laughs> don't disagree. Don't don't, di- don't disagree, Sean. Sean. Um, I used to really, um, I I could almost blindly um, just follow anything my dad would say. You know, I really, and I he was, you know, a, a blue collar, amazing, loving, bright, brilliant, lifelong learner person. Um, and I remember most of what he would say in, in the fundamentals were I still stand by. But there were things that I think about now 
that at a younger age or before I had my own life experience or before I ex expanded my own world view, I would have definitely um, just said, yeah, whatever dad says, because, um, you know, I just trust him and it's, and, and I do, and, and I would have, but now that I'm older and I'm a parent and I'm a wife and I'm a clinician and all of that, I'm not saying that I would disagree with a lot, but there are things that I think back now and I think he just didn't have enough info. Yeah. You know, I don't know that he would have drawn that conclusion had he seen this angle. Um, and, and so what does that say to me? Um, it's just always important to keep an open mind and to, to be seeking truth and always realizing we can be wrong. And that's something I've, I've hit on before, too. And realizing... be okay with it. Because I think that goes back to your point. Because when people aren't okay with it, they're scared and they like Cobra. Oh, yeah. Um, but to be like, I could be wrong, but I will admit that. And I think that's a safer place to be, honestly. Well, and I think... And again, I, I don't know where this comes from in the, in the culture or society, but not only are we reluctant to admit that we were wrong and to say that I'm sorry, and oddly enough, that was a blog from a couple of weeks ago because you know, I love my pop culture. I always think of that Alanis Morissette lyric where it's like, I'm wrong and I'm sorry, baby. And honestly, that was you in the beginning of the pandemic, and you admitted yeah, that. But, yeah, but it, it's really difficult to say that now. For some reason, and again, even outside the pandemic. But what's also really unfortunate is when someone is wrong or, and conflicting information comes out or when somebody changes their stance or things like that, we are very quick to disbelieve that. We, you know, I, we, we, in, in politics, oh, they call any it the... Oh, change yeah, in... In politics, they call it the, you know, the flip-flop. The and It's been, yeah, a waffle on stuff. We, we seem to immediately ascribe malintent when somebody changes yeah. their mind. And, or weakness. Or weakness or, you know, or any of these things. Soft. Any of these things that we don't tolerate, you know, because that's not, you know, you, you've got to be tough and all that stuff. Yeah. Um, and certainly there are people out there who see which way the wind is blowing and flap right along with it. Um, but I, I think jump like a lemming. I, I think we need to be a little bit more cautious to just not get so angry about it all the time and to, to, to maybe give people the benefit of the doubt a little bit more. That's fair. We don't need to be so angry. Yeah. And, you know, again, it comes down to control. You, you can in, in most cases. You know, again, I'm not I, I don't I don't want to, to uh, deal in absolutes either. We don't want to be giant hypocrites. Here. Well, yeah, I mean, it, you know, it, we can simmer down. Nobody is perfect. Yeah. I mean, I kind of flipped my lid uh, a lot this past weekend because so I. I just I got, as they say, I got triggered about the stupid mask thing, and I just had had enough. We both had. And I I, I don't really regret it because it was able to just kind of flush out some of the toxins, but. It probably also wasn't the the most evolved thing for me to do. Yeah, um, we are not um, perfect, but mm -hmm. be that as it may, we have the ability in most cases to control how we respond. Not necessarily how we react, but how we respond. We can have a visceral reaction, but we should be able to control that with our response. Yeah, and yeah. not not cause harm. Yeah, or or disrespect. You know. Um, Disagreement should not equal disrespect. I think there's room for nuance on that, honestly, yeah. because I, I think uh, some of it comes down to intent. I think if you have somebody who is misinforming somebody intentionally or is absolutely re resistant to, to not having an open mind, I, I think that is less respectable. I and mean, maybe that makes me imperfect. I don't know. But... It, it, it's I, I certainly would say if somebody is intentionally promulgating bad information, I would say that that is without ever trying to seek first to understand. Right. Yeah. Right. Well, well and that's, that's just where the not, intent. Yeah. The intent comes from. I mean, if somebody that's is maddening to me, if somebody I, legit doesn't know a thing and it's from a trusted source and all that stuff and that goes out there. I mean, you know, that, that's it's a, that's where it comes back to. Well, 
you know, that's where it comes back to saying, well, I, it turns out I'm wrong and I'm sorry. And, we, you know, this is this was a mistake. But if somebody is intentionally doing stuff or, again, is is just so resistant. Like a troll. To, like trolls. Yeah. They're, or, you know, they're, if somebody said, well, I, I saw a classic example about um, I wish I could go through the whole thing. But it was like, um, you know, there's only so many hours in the day and you can only travel so fast. So, that, you know, this thing that you're doing is physically impossible i think it was a reddit post and somebody was like well you know are you sure about that and this pro this person very carefully spelled out the entire math and they were like well and then the, the original poster was just like well that's your opinion i don't think i believe it though and it was like it was fairly so throw back a white Russian. Oh, it, yeah it was like it was like dry <laughs> That's just like your opinion. That was a little on delay oh, there. It was, Sorry, my contacts are so dry. It was how far you could drive in like 20 hours. And it was like, yeah, I could do that. And it was like, well, there's only so many. You know, oh, and someone dropped an opinion on the math? Yeah, yeah. Like legit that's discreet like your opinion, math. And man. they were like, that's your opinion. And I was like, no, that's that's math. Agree to disagree because yeah, I, I can't do the long division. Again, I, I can't really, and again, maybe this maybe <laughs> this is just my f flaw or something, but I, 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 I can't respect that as an opinion. I mean, there are times <laughs> where sometimes the opinion is just wrong. Like, well, that's is, is a, it a Neil, family Neil debate. deGrasse Tyson where he said, you know, you're, you're entitled to your opinion, but you're not entitled to your own facts. Yeah, Sometimes I like there that. are facts in the universe that that you know, you, like the speed of light is the speed of light, and it's like you you, you can't really argue with that. Y'all need science. <laughs> so what it comes down to is trying to control your responses to stuff, trying to be open to um, better information, higher quality information, uh, being receptive to that, and being receptive that others experience that too. And allow that a change of mind or a change of heart isn't necessarily a bad thing. I would argue quite the opposite. It is generally a good thing. It's honesty. It's accepting, learning, adapting. Yeah. You know, if you learn something doesn't work well and you're open to learning a better way to do it, I mean, it's a, on a pretty basic level, right? Yeah. Um, I think as an overall theme, what's emerging and, and I want to expose or put out there is I, I talked about we should stoke another person's flame, yes. you know, and, and never try to put out another light. And I think that's, that goes back to where we have these fears and we want to just shut other people down out of, you know, disagreements oh, or opinions instinct. or whatever. Yeah. Right. But isn't the, this is going to sound so cheesy, so <laughs> forgive me for like, hallmarkness or excuse me uh commercialness or, or whatever but have a good night john <laughs> isn't isn't the the world better or isn't our even community better if we're tending to everyone's light and allowing everyone's light i don't feel like mine shines brighter if i make a point to stomp out others hmm. At a at a candlelight vigil, wouldn't you rather see everyone with a flame than two people with a strong flame? Yeah. You know, so the way that we reach out and support each other, the way we appreciate others' opinions and and seek first to understand um, and hold the door and lift them up, I I I, I think it's. It's just the way to be, and I hope that we're learning from all of these crises um, so that we're, we're better able to do that. And, and on the optimism, I mean, I think we end up feeling better when we do that. Oh, my gosh, of course. Yeah. You know, two people have a flame. I'm not freezing outside. Yeah. You know, it's, um, it, it's good, and, and I've seen a lot of good. It's, I wanted that, and it's like I set that intention out after being so incredibly well i would rather stoke others flames than continue to watch my own tire fire uh, <laughs> it smells bad yes uh, that said did we curse did i curse myself when i had a flat tower flat tire at 5 p.m on a friday last week and now we need four new tires I kept talking about a tire fire, and now no, we could I have mean, those, one. The other one, they were worn anyway. That's, yeah, that's we drive not that the car a lot. It's the model. Yeah, I, 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 don't, I don't disagree with forces in the universe, but that wasn't one of them. Well, that's fine. <laughs>
All right, so hopefully we have added a little bit to your light today. Um, like I said, I know our, our fires have been burning hot and stinky. <laughs> but, um, but it's so, there's good stuff. There is a lot of good stuff out there. So we are, um, like I said before, we're getting ready to reset a little bit ourselves. Uh, going on vacation to refill our cups and uh, stoke our own fires a little bit. Um, look for some updates. Uh, we, like I said, we won't be. We definitely won't be live next week. I doubt we'll be live the week after that. Uh, but hopefully, we'll be able to get some uh, recorded messages out there. Please continue to like, share, and subscribe. We want to share uh, light with other people as well. Uh, we're going to get back a little bit to figuring out. Um, I know the last time I kind of took Sean's advice a little bit and stopped weighing myself as frequently. And I know the last time I weighed myself, I was actually back down under 230 again. So that was Ooh. another positive thing. Uh, it was like 229.8, but it was still back under 230. So that was positive. Yeah, things are improving for me. I'm about to hit that stupid threshold again. Yeah. And we're going to look at um, getting our, our healthy, our, our physical health back on track. And we're going to also continue talking about our positive mental health stuff. So and how to love on each other yes so oh. that's what you can expect over the the next little bit from fight to flight and from the best nest thank you kim pracken uh we look forward to our vacation i hope you continue to stay safe uh kim one of our great harmonica aficionados yes um, and great hair yes <laughs> yes um so again, hopefully we, we added to your light a little bit today. Um, hope you're, you're having a great time yourself. Um, any other final words of wisdom? No, just I'm so honored for anyone who even stays, stays tuned for a minute. Thank you. Yes. I'm honored by that. So honored by yes. that. So uh, again, please like, share, and subscribe. Please uh, take a visit to patreon.com slash best nest if you're so inclined. Um, check out our COPD Navigator stuff. Uh, check out our best nest stuff. We've got more sci-fi stuff coming with Emma and with Tommy. Um, we've got lots of fun stuff on the horizon. And uh, we really, as Kelly said, we really appreciate your support even just stopping by um, and sharing the word about uh, our endeavors. So. That's all. All right. So until next time, everybody, uh, I'm Mike. I'm Kelly. And this has been Fight to Flight with Kelly and Mike. Take care of yourselves, take care of each other, and keep breathing lightly.